Welcome to the commonly asked for questions that I get in regards to Google Sheets and Apps Script. My name is Lawrence. I'm going to be your instructor for this lesson. And the project that we're going to be creating advanced menu to your Google Sheet, a log so that we can track actions that are being done within the spreadsheet. And selecting that the first time will add to the log, the log at any time. We've also got info so we can select from our users and selecting info will have a modal pop up with the content coming from the spreadsheet, putting it into the modal. If there's no data or if we're on the wrong sheet, it will provide us a pop-up that says, sorry, no data. Another function that we're going to be adding within this lesson is the ability to select one of the rows of data, send an email out to that user. Once the email is sent, it will update the sent column. And we can go to our email and we can see that we've generated a custom email from the data from the spreadsheet. Create a PDF from the data from the sheet. It's going to generate a PDF file, returning back the file location coming from a Google Docs template. It's going to allow us to customize the values within the sheet as we're generating the PDF from the Docs template. So is going to get emailed as an attachment with a customized message. And this is all done with Google Apps Script. As we send emails, we're also going to be tracking when the emails are opened and viewed. So let's send out an email to this user. Go to the inbox. Notice that the viewed is zero. When we go to the inbox, once we view the email, it's going to update the viewed within our spreadsheet. Let's get started coding with Google Apps Script and updating our spreadsheet. Log into your Google account, then go over to Drive, under Drive, select New, and under New, we're going to create a spreadsheet. This project is going to be a bound script, so it's going to be bound to the spreadsheet. So you are going to need to have a Google account and as well create a blank spreadsheet that you can use in order to create the project. Give the spreadsheet a name. I'm going to call it Sheets Tester. Let's update the sheet to be called Users populate some information into the sheet. So we're going to need an ID, first, last name of the user, an email, and then this is where we're going to be tracking within the Google Apps script when it the email gets sent, when the file gets created, if the email has been viewed. First, last, and email so that I have a variety of different emails that I can send to my account. And the number is still going to be going to the same email address. Extensions, and then select Apps Script. So creating your Google scripting project, give this a name. I'm going to zoom in and increase the browser size so that it's easier to see the code that I'm going to be writing. I'm going to start by adding some items to the UI menu. So the UI menu is at the top of the spreadsheet so that we can click directly from the spreadsheet and run functions from our Google Apps script. We'll be using a default function called onOpen. So this function by default will run whenever the user opens the spreadsheet, the UI menu into the top bar of the spreadsheet application. We're going to be using the spreadsheet app. So we're going to create the menu and give the menu a label. So I'm going to just call it advanced menu. Something that's going to be meaningful whenever anyone opens up the spreadsheet and they want to run these functions. So some of the functions that we're going to be adding is we're going to add in an option to log some content. So this is going to be the label within the menu and this is going to be the function within the Google Apps Script that gets run whenever that item gets clicked in the menu. Got all of the items from the menu. You can add it to the UI in order to complete the process. Code directly within the Google App Script Editor, or you can just refresh your spreadsheet and it'll add the menu item. So I'm going to go ahead and run it from the Google Script. And now that's added the menu item, the advanced menu to the top of the spreadsheet. So now we can select from the menu and we've got our four menu items that are going to run the corresponding functions that we've just set up. So it's going to be a function called my log. And because we want this to be a separate item where we're going to be able to call to this in order to log into our sheet, just using a function, I'm going to set up a separate function called sheet logger and it's going to require one parameter and that's going to be a string value because this is just for the testing. We'll type in hello world. Next set up the next function which is going to be the sheet logger function and that's going to be requiring one parameter. It's going to be the message that we're going to add into the logger. I'm going to select the spreadsheets ID value and you can get the spreadsheet ID for going into your spreadsheet. Within the URL you can select the value and that's going to be the ID for your spreadsheet and then selecting the actual spreadsheet object. We're using the spreadsheet app and then we're doing an open by ID. So that will allow us to select spreadsheet 
So we want to select one of the sheets from the spreadsheet. We're going to give it a name of sheet log. It's a spreadsheet object that we've just opened up. We're going to get sheet by name. We're going to be looking for a sheet with the name of log. Don't have a sheet by the name of log. So we're going to create that within the application if it doesn't exist. Set up a condition that's going to check the sheet log. If it is equal to null, it's going to create the sheet. So we'll set the sheet log to an object and it's going to create a brand new sheet. And if the log sheet does exist, then it will already select that sheet object and attach it to the sheet log variable. And we can set a name be log. So the next time that we run to the log, it's going to automatically detect that that sheet is already there. Append a row within an array format. First column in a message, set the new date, add in the heading information. Within the UI menu, that will run sheet logger function, passing in a parameter of hello world as the message, selecting the spreadsheet and the sheet with the name of log. If it doesn't exist, it will create a brand new one. Apply a heading to that, append the message with the current date into the sheet log. So first I'm going to run it manually so we can accept the permissions to run, select my log, and then run that function. Accept the permissions, select the account that you want to use in order to run the application. Under advanced, select go to the sheet name. You can also select under Google account if you want to remove or revoke permissions to any script. Select allow and then go back into your spreadsheet. There's a new sheet within your spreadsheets called log with the heading of messages and date. Advanced menu, select log the message into the sheet with the name of log. And for this function, we're going to need to get the data from the sheet, create a separate function, return back the data from the row using spreadsheet app, get the active spreadsheet, get the active sheet, get the name of the sheet to check if the sheet name is users. If the sheet name is users, we're going to get the current selection in order to select the currently selected active range. Let's return back the row value, check to see if that selected range row is going to be less than the last row of data. We can return an object name results. We're going to create a separate function that's going to get the user information. It will need parameters for the row as well as the last column of data within the sheet. If the user's not on the correct sheet, we return back the sheet name for results, turn back null. Set up the function, get the user information. You have the two parameters, the row as well as the number of columns. To get the values, select the current active spreadsheet, get the active sheet, get all of the sheet values using the range, the starting row and the starting column. The number of rows that we want to return back, so we want the one row. Number of columns that we want to return back, the first item within the array, the index value of zero. Let's construct an object from the data, returning back the ID with index value of zero. First name is going to be in the index value of one. Last name is going to be under the index value of two. The email is going to be under the index value of three. The row is going to be the same parameter that was passed into the get user. Let's go back up to the function. We've got the data coming within the data object. You can test that under the logger log just to make sure that it is working. Run the function and you should see the data that's coming from the selected row. So we've got the row three is selected and that's the corresponding data. Make sure that the content within the data is on the user's sheet and that the data has results. Under the files, add a new file, so an HTML file. Apply some styling to the paragraph. Use the scriptlet to get the user's first name and get the user's last name. Add that to the HTML output. Customize the HTML as needed. You can use the ID as well. Go back to your code from the template using HTML service. Create the template from file. Specify the file name as a string value. Populate the user data from the data results object. Create the HTML output using HTML service. Create HTML output. Take the HTML object, evaluate it so that it populates the content and use get content in order to retrieve that content from the template as HTML. You can set a height and a width to the output. Use the spreadsheet app, get the UI, 
show the modalless dialog, output the HTML output, give it a title. For tracking, you can use the sheet logger to log information into the log sheet. If the selection is out of bounds where we don't have a user information, use the spreadsheet app UI, provide a message back to the user. So let's go into the spreadsheet and we'll try it out. Run through the selecting the permissions the first time you run it. And now try it again under info. And we have the message, sorry, no data. Select a row where there is some data. So it provides us the content from the spreadsheet it's outputting it within the modal pop-up. That's including the ID and the content from first and last. Try it on another row. Go back into the code, create my emailer function, get the data just like we did within the my info. And also we want to check to make sure that there is valid data for the user, just as we did within the info function. If we do have data for the user, create a function that's gonna send the user an email. Also track into the logger that we sent an email to this user. Create a function to send the user data with the user information. We're gonna send an HTML email, populate the template user information, evaluate it, return it, the content back as HTML content. You can add to the HTML of the message. I added in the user ID to the message that we're gonna send. Using mail app, send email, parameters within the object, we need the user email, the HTML body, which is within the message object. We're gonna update the spreadsheet with the word send. Select the user's sheet. Select the range that we want to update. You can use the row information from the user object. Column is gonna be column five. That's the one we want to update. Set the value to be sent. Let's go back to the spreadsheet, the user that you want to send it to once you've accepted permissions. And it will populate column number five with send. We can go into the logs, email sent, and the address that it was sent to, to our email. And we can see that we actually did get the information sent to the corresponding email that was all coming from the spreadsheets. In the tracking, once the email is sent, default function for the web app is do get. We're gonna be checking for a parameter called ID, log it into the log, create a function to update the row if we don't have a parameter ID, stringify the E parameter, we get that logged into the sheet logger. Create the adder function, select the user sheet that you want to update. Select all of the values from the sheet into a variable called data. Loop through all of the rows of data using the data length. Check for a match from the first column, which is the ID column in the data from the spreadsheet by the range. The range is going to be coming from the value of i within the for loop, plus one because the row values start at one, selecting the range from column number seven and returning back just the one value. Get the value that's in the current range, increment that value by one, set the value back to the new updated value for that column. Go into the spreadsheet, under the viewed, set the default values to be zero. And now we're ready to launch our web app under deploy. Select new deployment, under select type, select web app, enter in a description and select anyone and then deploy the web application. Copy the URL, this is gonna be your custom URL for your web application. In the send email function, add your custom URL that you've just created. Go back to do get, you need to return content. Turn back is gonna be using the content service, creating text output stringify the e parameter as text output that's going to be returned now that we've updated the executable we need to redeploy so going under deploy manage deployments because we already have our deployment select the edit and under edit we're going to create a new version the same url and we can make updates to the deployed web app url select deploy open the url within the browser add question mark id equals one to the end of the url that should return back parameter with an ID of one. If we go back into the spreadsheet, the row with the ID one should be updated and we should also have a value of one sitting within the log. So going back to where we've got the send email, add to the HTML, the response back from a function that we're gonna create called tracker, pass in the user ID. 
create the tracking function, get the ID from the, that we're going to use within the e-parameters. This is where we need the URL. So you can bring that into the tracker. Within tracker, we're going to return back some HTML, creating an image of the value of URL plus the question mark with the ID and equal that to the value of ID. Set the width and the height of the image to one. Go back into the sheets, send an email to one of the users, go into your inbox, view the email that was just sent, and then go back into your sheets and you're gonna see that there was a view counted within that email. Also see that within the logs, that ID was requested twice and that's where we got a count of two. So every time that email is viewed, that will increment the count back into our spreadsheet. Set up the my PDF function, similar to what we had within the my info. Check the data, make sure that we do have some user information, log it out to the sheet and provide an alert back if there was no data selected. Update the log information and create a function called create my PDF user information to that function. Get the user information into the create my PDF function. Within the drive, you can create a brand new folder. I'm gonna call it made. Select the folder within the URL at the top. That's gonna to be the folder ID. Store the folder ID within the made folder. Create a brand new Google Doc. This will serve as the template. Add in some content into the template. You can apply styling as well and include images. Select the doc ID. Go back into your script. Add the doc ID into the create my PDF. Let's select the document as our document template using the Drive app. Get the file by ID and this is where we can use the doc ID. Select the folder. Select the folder that you want to add the files into and this is going to be folder by ID. This is where you can use the folder ID that we just tracked. Let's create a brand new document using the doc template making a copy of it using the make copy method, which is gonna be the main folder. So this is where the new document is gonna get created. We want to edit the new document. So now that we've created it, use the doc app, open by ID, and we can get the ID by using the new doc, the get ID method, which will return back the ID and allow us to select it into the edit new object. We wanna get the body of the document, use the get body method. Let's update the content of the template. Once we've selected the body object, you can use the replace text method. Replace first with the value that's with the user first, and that's coming from the spreadsheet content. Replace last with the content from user last. Once completed the edit of the new document, we save and close that document. Select that new document as a blob with the meme type of PDF. Create a new file for that PDF and set a name within the main folder. So get the active spreadsheet, get the sheet users, and then select the range using the user row column number six for the value that we want to update, and then set the new value to the new PDF using the get URL. If you want to remove the doc that we've just created, you can use the set trashed method, set that to true, and that's gonna move the document that was created, not the PDF, but the doc, into the trash, return the new PDF object. Going into the spreadsheet, select the row that you want to update, accept permissions on the new function, and it's created a brand new PDF at this location using the template, the data from the spreadsheet within the folder using the data that's coming from the spreadsheet. If you want to email the newly created PDF, we can select the user email and we'll create a function send to email where we've got the user information and then the new PDF object that we want to send the user data and the new PDF object that we just created email to the user that's running the script within the session get the active user we can get the email value from the active user that's logged in and accessing the spreadsheet to the user I'm using the back ticks the template literals we can add in the object information, use the mail app, send an email. So that's going to be the user email, the subject, and then the message. Use the object, the property name of attachments, the objects that we want to attach to the email. And in this case, it's going to be the new PDF object that we just created. Add in the catch in case there are any issues. Try the new function where we select an item from the spreadsheet, accept the 
script authorization as we've added in new permissions. It's going to run the script now and then also sending an email out to the user. And there's the attached PDF coming from the template. Thank you for watching. Now you can go ahead and customize your spreadsheet to use some of the most commonly asked for functions that I get about Google Apps Script and Sheets. So try it out for yourself and see what you can make happen with Sheets and Apps Script.